When is a fool not a fool? When is Don Quixote? How foolish did I feel after finishing this book? Let's find out. Welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and I'm reading and reviewing 52 books in 52 weeks in 2023, including the 50 greatest books of all time. This is my 50th book review of the year. We're in my last three reviews, Don Quixote by Miguel Cervantes. And before we talk about the book, let's talk about Miguel de Cervantes. He was a Spanish author born in 1547, died in 1616. And of course, Don Quixote is his most known work. And we're talking almost 500 years ago. So everything about Miguel de Cervantes is up for debate, including his name. And regardless of the facts, he is considered one of the most important authors of all time. Okay, specs and stats for Don Quixote. It was originally published in two parts first in 1605 and then in 1615. It is one of the most translated and best-selling novels of all time. I paid $13.99 for my copy from Amazon. It is a hefty translation by Edith Grossman coming in at 940 pages long. And I do like this book. It was a nice printing and fell great in the hands. Don Quixote is my second longest read of the year coming in behind only the war and peace. I did listen to a portion of this on Audible where it is read by the great George Goodall for 39 hours and 37 minutes. Okay, onto the style of Don Quixote. This is an epic novel. It's often considered the OG of modern novels. And what is a modern novel? They depict the everyday alongside the extraordinary and reflect the era and the culture that the novel is set in. In the original text, Cervantes uses modern Castilian and old Castilian language. This is reflected or effected in the English translation by making Don Quixote speak kind of Bible speak. And this is to differentiate his speech from everybody else's in the entire novel. The old versus modern Castilian in the original work, that's one of the things that are lost in translation. Because while we can understand Don Quixote speaking Bible speak, apparently in the original text, no one could even understand what Don Quixote was saying. Is Don Quixote a comedy? A tragedy? Is it an adventure? Yes. There is quite a bit of play on language, both in the speech and in the characters' names. And speaking of characters, we're only gonna mention four of them by name here initially. First is Don Quixote, our hero, knight errant. Chivalric standard bearer, defender of the weak, writer of wrongs. Sancho Panza, loyal squire and friend. Prodigious proverb proclaimer, the helpmeet, that we all deserve. Rosinante, Don Quixote's steed. Though steed might be an exaggeration, the mount matches the master. Doña Dulcinea de Toboso, Don Quixote's lady love, his inspiration, though she is as much a lady as the windmills are giants. There are lots of other characters in the novel, some of them recurring, and they pop in and pop out as the adventures unfold. On to the plot of the novel, and Don Quixote was told in two parts. And the first part has two sallies, where Don Quixote adventures. And the, the second part of the novel is interesting in the fact that in the novel, some of the characters, though not Don Quixote, have read the first part of Don Quixote. It's a bit of a mind bend, but remember, in real life, there were 10 years between the two parts, and it's translated into the novel as well. Alonso Quixano is a minor, non-titled Spanish nobleman who has read so many chivalric romances that he essentially goes mad 
and decides to become a knight errant. He dons the title Don Quixote and an old suit of armor, mounts his trusty steed Rosinante, and sallies forth in search of adventures. He designates a slaughterhouse worker, his lady love, and demands from all those that he come across that they declare that she is the most fair. In part one, one of Don Quixote's first adventures is he mistakes an inn for a castle and an innkeeper for a lord from whom he demands a dubbing as a knight errant. He also mistakes the prostitutes as ladies in waiting and the horse trough as a chapel where he stands vigil his first night as a knight. Misadventures occur until Don Quixote is carried home by some of his friends unconscious. Prior to his second sally in the first part, Don Quixote asks his neighbor Sancho Panza to be his squire. He promises him a minor governorship if he loyally fulfills his duties. And we start this sally with the famous event, the tilting at windmills, where Don Quixote mistakes the windmills for giants and charges them at full gallop. And it doesn't get any less crazy as Don Quixote challenges friars, more guests at the inn, pilgrims, and goat herds. I actually, I found part two to be less good than part one. And a lot of that has to do, I think, with the fact that the characters often in part two were aware of who Don Quixote and Sancho Panza were. And most of his adventures or misadventures occurred because these people wanted to amuse themselves by messing with Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. I feel like in the first part, it was more organic and just happened naturally as opposed to a slight amount of mean-spiritedness in the second half as they were just, well, amusing themselves with Don Quixote. And in the end of the book, Don Quixote falls deathly ill. He awakens as Alonso Quixano again, renounces his life as Don Quixote, apologizes for the wrongs that he's committed and dies. And that's my end of the description for the plot of Don Quixote onto my thoughts. And I've been staring at this book on my bookshelf for almost 12 months. I had watched or read some reviews prior to this year starting and they mentioned Don Quixote oftentimes as one of the classics you don't actually need to read. And so I've been dreading this read the entire year because of all the negativity and shade thrown towards it. However, Don Quixote was a pleasant surprise. I did enjoy this read. Perhaps I could have used a couple hundred pages less. Maybe I just could have read the first part and I would have been very satisfied. I laughed and I cried during this story. I winced at every blow that Don Quixote took even felt some pity at times at the tragic state that his mind was in. No doubt this is a comedy. The premise is ridiculous, but it's so well done, it's great. It's also a tragedy. Alonzo, he literally goes crazy. People make fun of him, almost kill him. Instead of true love, he makes up this tragic story. Can you summarize Buddhism in one sentence? I can try. It goes like this. Life is suffering. Can you endure and find meaning and worth in the face of adversity? At most times, Don Quixote might as well be a Buddhist monk instead of a knight errant. He seems to welcome the pain, almost revel in it, finds it elevating. I like when I've been reading this year in these classics and I find the origins of popular sayings. I realize that things that I've seen in popular media where they took their inspiration from originally. 
Tilting at windmills is a great example. You say tilting at windmills when someone is fighting an imaginary foe. Have you seen or read the science fiction series, The Expanse? Do you remember the name of the spaceship that they escaped in? Rosinante. I love it. Overall, I really enjoyed this read. It was rather pleasant. I wasn't looking forward to it because of all the negativity I had read about it, but it turned out to be a nice surprise. It's a bit long and can be intimidating, but just take it in small chunks. And it really helps, honestly, that the chapters are really small. and That makes the reading seem like it's going quicker than perhaps it actually is. This, I think, to me is a good example where some of the critics that I've listened to, they had it wrong. So if you would like to go for a wild romp through the Spanish countryside, you should put this on your shelf. All right, guys, on to the star rating, and I judge all my books on five criteria, six if I listen to an audible, and here we go. Initial response, how do I feel as soon as I finish the book? I give it a four. A recommendation, how likely am I to recommend this book? I gave it a three. Style, did I enjoy the writing style? Four. Plot structure, plot structure. How engaged was I in the story? I gave it a five. Characters, were they relatable, believable, engaging? Of course, I gave it a five. And Audible, for those books that I listened to on Audible, how was the production? And I gave it a five. George Goodall, he is awesome. All right, that's 26, and 26 divided by six is 4.33. 4.33 stars for Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. I think that is an excellent score for an excellent book. All right, my guys, thanks for sticking with me. If you enjoyed the video, like it, it's free. Subscribe to see more of my content. I'm doing or have done 52 book reviews in 52 weeks in 2023. Links to those are in the description below. The name of the channel is Whiskey and Literature. I do whiskey reviews as well. If you're into that sort of thing, feel free to check out that side of the channel. But for now, my friends, you know what to do. I hope you're reading something good and drinking something great. Turn the page and stay thirsty. Cheers. Cheers.